Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you for the power of your word. We help us to grow more and more in love with your written word and your incarnate word. Transform us so that we can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good morning, all. We're in, uh, we're in Revelation chapter 11. We're going to have some trouble connecting here. Um, okay. So, Did you want to, uh, want to put it on uh, the um, NLT? We're on Amplified right now. You're on Amplified. NLT, please. Uh, I've got NLT on my screen, but I'm looking at uh, Amplified on yours. event at that time if that makes any sense so from that from that vantage point where the angels is is reflecting on this it's past tense for him but it's actually future tense in terms of um the sequ uh, the sequence of events that's being laid out in the book like i said it's hard to even talk about <laughs> have to just realize let's go on with it maybe the pieces will fall together uh, and he will reign forever and ever. Again, future, but now he's talking future tense. So he, the kingdom of the world, uh, kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. So this is God the Father, God the Son, actually taking reign. Up till now, uh, God's influence has been um, observed. Um, because it, it always will be. I mean, he's, in, he's always in the picture to some degree or another. But as the reigning monarch, uh, that's what they're reflecting on here. And um, keep that in mind as we, uh, as we venture on here. Verse 16, the 24 elders who sat on the thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give you thanks, Lord, the Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign, okay, and the nations were enraged, okay, this harkens to back to um, Psalm 2, by the way, good place to read Psalm 2, right here, uh, might want to make a note of that, uh, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged, and the time to reward your bond servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. Key phrase here, because this actually reflects on the bowl judgments, which don't come up until we get to chapter 15. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're jumping around here. But this, this seventh trumpet, it's not, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's considered to be the third woe. In other words, bad news um, starts off with good news. The kingdom of the Lord becomes the kingdom of, of uh, uh, God and of his Christ, of God the Father, God the Son. That's great news. How is that the terror? It's a terror to the people on the earth uh, because ultimately uh, the bold judgments are going to catch up with them. And that's what's being uh, inaugurated here uh, at the end of uh, 18. Okay. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. Uh, might point out here, too, that this ark, now, the ark that we have on planet Earth, wherever it is, uh, and it's in storage somewhere. Um, some people say it's Ethiopia, some say it's under the Temple Mount. Um, it's, you know, it's not out in the open, wherever it is, it's, it's hidden, it's well hidden at this point. Um, that is only a facsimile of the actual ark. That ark is in God's temple in heaven. Just like the temple on earth that we see, whether it's the, the um, tabernacle in the wilderness, whether it was Solomon's temple or uh, Zerubbabel's temple or Herod's temple, 
Um, those are just facsimiles of the actual temple in heaven. That's and that is actually pointing at, pointing out the uh, what we believe would probably be the uh, likely ruling uh, uh, place for the Lord when He finally takes the throne, because that that the the top of that ark is referred to as the mercy seat. And uh, of all places that you'd have to choose from, from what we have to work with, that seems to be the best bet right now. It might turn out to be something else. But uh, Jesus will re- reign from um, from, uh, a, from a temple seat. And um, that's um, it's pointed to here. Now, the fact that you can even see the ark... <laughs> in heaven indicates that the veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place where the ark actually is is either drawn or torn down um but you can see all the way into the temple to the uh to the ark and again and that kind that may reflect back on the fact that the lord has taken power uh and is reigning from there i don't know so these, these i don't know are up in the earth what? i don't know yeah. See, the every visual that we have of heaven has the throne of God Almighty. There's no there's no veil between the people and God in heaven. Um, so it, on earth there was because there needed to be a holy of holies, but because now these people are all sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, they have access to the throne. And so, um, and and yes, the mercy seat of God is incredibly. Uh, visual here, but I also want to comment on how how the um, how heaven is a place of thankfulness. Um, yes. The four and twenty yes. elders and the and the people worshiping God. Um, right. So so in the midst of this trauma on earth, people are glorifying God. They're giving thanks. They're worshiping God Almighty. Um, not only the elders, but when we step back a step, the the great multitude is, and uh, so we have this um, this uh, um, this contrast between how dismal things are on earth in this tribulation period, and how in heaven the God of heaven and the Son are um, are th- are, uh, are are revered and respected and. And given thanks to so, yeah, so exactly. the attributes, the attributes. Yeah, a, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. So the attributes of the goodness of God are reflected in heaven, and the attributes of judgment on an evil, on an evil world are simultaneously being reflected on earth. Um, right. So that's the point. That's the point. We've got a great dichotomy going on here. Yes. This 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 whole passage. If you're if you're a believer, this is great news. Yes. If you're an earth dweller, well, the end is uh, the end is now in sight for sure. Yes. Uh, but again, that's only when after the bold judgments are, are poured out uh, in fifteen and beyond. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Let's keep reading then. So, yeah. So the temple of God, which is in heaven, but it was open. The ark of the covenant appeared to his temple. Appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. Uh, events that accompanied uh, the end of the seal judgment. Here we have this accompanying the end of the, uh, the trumpet judgment um, and the, the inauguration of the bowl judgments down the road. Once we get past cha- chapters 12, 13, 14 um, are kind of a sidestep. Uh, in these, uh, they have their own sequence as well that they, you need to graft into this overview uh, that's being developed. We've got the uh, the various judgments, the three tiers of judgment going on. It's like our major timeline in this thing. But now uh, in 12, we're going to back off and talk about uh, the woman who represents Israel and the dragon, who's Satan, and uh, their interplay. And then we'll have... Uh, um, in 13, that's a, 13 is probably the most famous uh, chapter in the book because it talks about the uh, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the mark of the beast, 666, and so forth. That all comes up in 13, 
14, we talk about the harvests, the harvest of the righteous and the unrighteous and so forth. And then 15 is where the bold judgments will begin. And uh, uh, that's, the, I mean, that's the overall progression of the book. And uh, fitting that together with a timeline is the challenge that we have before us. So, Amen. Lord, we thank you for your power, for your mercy, for your word, for our warnings. We would ask that we would live abundantly in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you again, Lord, for your word, the profound influence, the, uh, the, uh, the perspectives of, of such grandeur, such uh, enormity that uh, we are left with so much to think, ponder about, and consider. Uh, and to see all of this come to pass, uh, to brace us, to give us confidence in the future, as dire as it may look at times, and it will look bad. But uh, to see it, to see it come to pass as you have, as it has been described here, uh, will be of great comfort to us and edify us. And we appreciate that. We pray that you'll lead us to live lives that glorify you, which is our uh, primary goal in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Blessings to you all.